Hello everyone, welcome back to MZ Adventures. My name is Zach and today we are playing CSI Three Dimensions of Murder. Uh, we've played all the past ones um, so far and I've been enjoying them. Even with the glitches and stuff that we've experienced, but we are now moving on. This, hopefully it's a lot better than the other ones, we'll see. Yeah, it's created by... Ubisoft and Telltale Games. So, without further ado, we're gonna get right into it. You guys, know my name's Zach, so we're gonna do that. Let's get into it. Welcome to Vegas, the city without clocks, in the casinos anyway. Here at CSI, time is something we pay close attention to, because the early hours of a murder investigation are key. As our newest crime scene investigator, your credentials are strong, but the proof is in your performance. Gail, yeah, we've got a situation over... Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt. Catherine Willows, let me introduce you to our newest CSI. Now, what have you got for us? Art gallery owner by the strip with an unexpected exhibit on his showroom floor. A dead body. Possible homicide. Thanks, Kath. Okay, I'm partnering you with Warwick Brown on this case. He'll help show you the ropes. But your own CSI skills are what we're counting on to crack this case. Catherine, I have lab work to get back to. Would you supervise this case? You got it, Gil. And you should head to that art gallery now. Oh, and remember, as G.K. Chesterton once said, the criminal is the creative artist, the detective only the critic. All right, so let's go ahead and head to this crime scene. I'm CSI Work Brown. I'm glad to have some help on this one. We got a dead Vic on the floor and a live gallery owner waiting in the sidelines. Are you ready? Pay close attention. We're in the art world. And if you don't know how to look at something, you won't understand what it means. Pretty. The Vic's face down. Spatter pattern on the wall close by indicates blunt force trauma. Take a photo of this. It's always good for future reference. You're going to need an angle that shows the Vic's position in relation to the spatter. Ready. Too pretty, too young, and way too dead. Pay close attention to the body. There could be evidence anywhere from head to toe. Start with the purse, shall we? Grab it. No wallet, cash, or ID. Could this be a glorified mugging? Who knows? Pick this up, got a hair. That's no human hair. It's too thick. Some kind of animal, maybe. Got a ring here. Well, with a rock like that left behind, I doubt we have a robbery. This was personal. Check. Blood flowed from the head wound and that the head around her. That suggests she bled to death right here. Do you think? Hey, maybe 
we just got lucky. That blood print says somebody's shoe picked up transfer. Do you need to camera? I want you to note the blood spatter here. For a visual pattern like this, you'll want to use the digital camera. Then you can get the blood afterwards. Well, if a picture's worth a thousand words, we got several thousand here telling us what went down. The Vic was hit at least twice. The pattern in her position relative to it tells us so. The first blow probably caused the puncture wound and sent her to the ground. The second blow, while she was down, created the blood spatter. We need to get a swab of that. Up. Sixty dollars for an earthbound bird. If our theft was the motivation, why not take the other two birds as well? Well, we need print this. Nice catch. Whoever bagged our bird may have left that print. Time to go ask. What is your name? This, this guy. This is the Nathan Ackerman Fine Art Studio, and I am Nathan Ackerman. My art? displaying the creativity and on occasion the genius of my exhibitors in a setting that is itself a work of art. Do you mind if we ask you a few questions? Please do. Consider me your host and ally. Don't hesitate to ask if I can help you resolve this, uh, this affair quickly and cleanly. I'll see what we can do. But Mr. Ackerman, there's nothing clean about murder. What happened here? I was out briefly on an errand, and to my devastation, I discovered a client, Rachel Maddox, dead on my gallery floor. You must understand that this is a crushing blow. Rachel was an excellent client and a dear friend. I can't imagine who would do such a thing. Perhaps a vagrant or one of these psychopathic killers you read so much about? Rachel at the gallery. Was about to be a bride. She had commissioned a painting and a sculpture, both of herself, for her wedding from one of my best artists. Unfortunately, he can also be one of my slowest artists, and Rachel and her fiancé were, well, let's say, fit to be tied that the art pieces, which were due some time ago, were not ready. Why did you leave Rachel at the gallery? I had an emergency overnight artwork delivery to ship. I needed to leave by 5 p.m., but Rachel was adamant we had to wait for the artist to come. I really shouldn't have left the two of them alone in the gallery, but they are, were, respectable clients. Anyway, Rachel, well, refused to leave. She said she was staying put just in case. I believe her words were, irresponsible ass of an artist does me the supreme favor of showing up. So that's how I came to leave the two of them here, and I had intended to be back before we closed at 6. As it was, it was 6.10 before I returned and found the door wide open and Rachel, Rachel in this terrible posture. As for her fiancé, uh, he was nowhere to be seen. This is the most ghastly thing that has ever happened at the Nathan Ackerman Fine Art Studio. What kind of mad beast are we dealing with here? What's the artist's name? Patrick Milton. Many of the works in this showroom are in fact his. 
He is not a critical darling, considered by some too commercial, but the public loves him, and as long as they do, so do I. Time was he expected uh, to arrive? That was the spark that lit the fuse of the argument between Rachel and Mark. The artist had vowed to be here with the finished painting and sculpture first thing this morning, but he didn't show up at all. Not the first time, and Rachel flew into a rage when he did not appear. What is your relationship? Our association goes back years, almost a decade. Quite frankly, he's the star here. I've displayed and sold hundreds of his works. I could have sold more, but he misses so many deadlines. No matter how hard I've tried to breed professionalism into his artist's soul, I failed. Still, he does sell. Do you have his address? Ridiculous as it might seem, no. I have never once in all the years of our very successful association even seen his studio. As I say, he's quirky, private to the point of reclusiveness. Oh, but of course I have a phone number and a P.O. box. He wants his checks, after all. That'll be enough to track him. Thanks, Mr. Ackerman. What's her fiancé's fiance name? Is one Mark Stock. A taciturn fellow with a physique worthy of a Greek sculpture and uh, just about as talkative. Frankly, he has the personality of a doorstop and the artistic taste of a hillbilly. Forgive my candor. The man does have his admirers. He's an ex-baseball player of some kind from the minor leagues, I believe. As I said, he was here with Rachel when I left, but when I returned, she was alone, undead. Anything else can you tell us about yes. Mark? They were having an argument about the art, which was unusual as Mr. Stock had never expressed an opinion from the beginning. Now he was making a stand. He said it was foolish to make such a fuss, and the wedding could easily go on without these silly pieces. But Rachel wasn't having any of that. In Mr. Stock's words, he can sound rather shrill for such a strapping specimen of masculinity. He said Rachel had become unreasonable and out of control over the artist not showing up. And, well, honestly, he had a point. She did have that, that side to her. Understand, I was very fond of Rachel, but frankly, some of the invective she hurled was directed not just at her fiancé, but, if you can imagine, at me. If they were arguing, why did you leave them here? Fortunately, a truce between the betrothed had come to pass before I had to leave. They were even, shall we say, affectionate. I felt comfortable enough leaving them alone. The storm had blown over, and they were like lovebirds again. To me, Thoughts Mark, Mark Stock would be an enigma if he had a higher IQ. During their tiff, he seemed cold, emotionless. He's one of those passive-aggressive types who occasionally erupt, but in a strange, distant way unleashing a torrent of abusive language, but delivering that invective in a controlled, cruel manner, seemingly devoid of any feeling. you have their current address? They visit Vegas frequently, weekend getaways, from which they invariably stop by my gallery to do business. Rachel did so love art. What was the question? Ah. No, I have no address. They flew in for their wedding, and I have no idea at which hotel, though it will certainly be one of the pricier ones. What can you tell us about the missing hawk statue? Oh, I can tell you it's a disaster. That's one of our most valuable pieces. Hawks are a specialty of Mr. Milton's, and that's a signature work. Any Milton collector would kill to... Uh, excuse me. That was an unfortunate burst of hyperbole, but I can say with no exaggeration at all that the perch predator is an expensive item indeed, and I'll be calling my insurance agent as soon as we're done here. Do you have a photo of that missing statue? Standard operating procedure in the art game. I'll be glad to get it for you, though I'd appreciate its eventual return. Insurance, you know. Huh. Can we look at your shoes?
Okay, that's about it. My fingerprints are all over this gallery, both literally and figuratively. As I said, I intend to cooperate fully. My life is an open book. Thank you. Uh, no, I'm sorry, no. What happened to full cooperation? Your life an open book? My life is an open book, that I pledge to you. But I can't allow this door to be opened. I may seem inconsistent, but there are many expensive, even priceless objects dark back there, and I cannot risk damage. Particularly when I see no relevance to your investigation, since it's been locked throughout this entire unfortunate affair. I'm sorry, unless you have a warrant, I can't... Uh, I just can't allow you to go flinging your fingerprint powder around and spritzing of various sprays. All right. Let's uh, go to the morgue. Can you recover the sure. body? I'll send a team right out. What was the cause of death? Force trauma, back of the head. Wounds interesting, an irregular shape, somewhat triangular. It's the murder weapon's signature. Here's something you might find interesting. A small piece of foreign fibrous material. Definitely not skull. Could a hawk sash you cause the wound? I found appears similar in color to the photograph. So the bird's bill might be consistent with the wound. But without the real thing, it's just a guess. What was the time of death? Well, based on the victim's liver temperature, dead less than two hours. Under ideal conditions, the body cools two degrees the first hour, then one degree after that. So we can put it around 5.30 p.m. Get any fingerprints? Way ahead of you. Taking fingerprints off a of victim's body is part of my routine. Here you are. What about it? The tox report. The tests show high concentrations of diazepam, a benzodiazepine commonly prescribed for anxiety disorders. Any other trace evidence? Well, it's not entirely unusual, but your prospective bride already had a honeymoon. Semen in the vaginal canal. No forced entry, presumably consensual sex. I've got a sample for you. I look at the body. Glad to have your perspective. I've got nothing new to report on the Vic. Time to head to the lab. spatter matches the Vic's blood. It's a start. Links her to the crime scene. This verifies Ackerman stepped in the victim's blood. Those two aren't quite a match. Try to be more sure before you ask me for confirmation. It's all about the details. Those two aren't quite a match. Try to be more sure before you ask me for confirmation. It's all about the details. Fucking up, sorry guys.
like a match for me. So, Rachel and her fiance yeah. did kiss and make up tonight. Evidence of sperm shows Mark scored a home run. But look at this. He's got a record with a history of violence. So let's get brass on this bad boy. Well, we got more evidence to do. Go to fingerprints. Grace. The prints on the pedestal are Ackerman's. It's no surprise. It's his gallery. Of course, he's still a suspect. Right, we gotta do item to be go. I need to go to the for scope. Commonly used to make paintbrushes. Maybe we should find our reclusive artist. Time to go to brass. You can kiss my ass. Search for sus suspect murder you weapon. That hawk sculpture might be the murder weapon, huh? I'll get my boys to start searching for it immediately. Check back later. He tracked down Mark Stark. We tracked every hotel and resort in Vegas. No small task. But we've got them registered at the Romanoff, which is also where their wedding and reception was scheduled. Mark Stark's here to identify his fiance's body. He says he's eager to help. So let's give him a chance. We know this is difficult, Mr. Stark. You have our condolences. You don't have to pretend to feel anything. You didn't know, Rachel. Who did this to her? Well, that's what we're trying to find out, sir. Best we can tell, you were the last person to see her alive. That's not true. Then who was, Mr. Stock? Her killer, of course. Look, I was only with Rachel another maybe 15 minutes after Ackerman went off to mail a package or something. I had a previous engagement. And what was that? My bachelor party. At Orgasma. You mean the strip joint? Yeah. You think a bachelor party's going down at a library or maybe a church basement? Hey. What was your relationship? A guy I used to play ball with recommended him to me. Some favor. As far as I'm concerned, Ackerman's a pretentious sleazeball. His word's as good as the paper it isn't written on, if you, if you get me. And this crap with him and this clown Milton... I don't remember when I was ever so frustrated. You argue with your wife at the gallery? Listen, I loved Rachel. I worshipped that woman. But she had a temper like a rabid monkey. And when Ackerman and Milton started jerking us around over that work, man, Rachel went off like a bomb. When that girl got mad, <laughs> she'd get in your face and your eyeballs and teeth would melt. She wanted her natural beauty preserved forever, displayed at the reception so her family and friends in the whole damn world could see her towering majesty. She insisted that damn artist would show up, 
and the owner was off on his errand. He left the keys with us in case he wasn't back by six so we could lock up for him. He gave you the keys to the gallery? Yeah. Rachel and me were supposed to lock up at six. Ackerman headed out with his package. We had our little fling in back, and then, well, I had a bachelor party to go to. What about the prior assault charges? I was a cocky kid. A college star who wound up in the minor leagues. I was too damn dumb to know I should just pay my dues like everybody else. And I made a lot of enemies, throwing my weight and my temper around. And I paid the price for it. That incident got me blacklisted from the league and ended any hope of a major league career. And it was my own damn fault, okay? And since then, hey, man, you're looking at a pacifist. But maybe you had a relapse, snapped under all this wedding pressure. After that bust, I started seeing a court-appointed shrink, and I am Mr. Chill now. Nothing gets to me, not even Rachel's temper. I look back on how I used to be, and man, I was not cool. I was a world-class ass. Hey, that's not me anymore. I loved Rach, and her family was going to set me up in a sporting goods shop that would have given me a whole new lease on life. You think I would have flushed that down the john like I did my baseball career over an argument about some damn artwork? No way, man. No way. I didn't kill her. I loved her. But there is one situation where I might lose it again. Might have, what'd you say? A relapse. How's that? When you catch this bastard, if I get my hands on him, no guarantees, man. No guarantees. May we search your hotel room? Of course. We're on the same team, guys. Find who did this. Find him. What do you mean by fling? Oh, no. we just had our fun with some cheap champagne. When did you leave and where did I was you go? supposed to meet the guys downtown at 6 before we headed for Orgasma and the Bash. So, it, hell, must have been, what, 5.15? And I had to put pedal to the metal to make it on time, even so. Okay. Hey. Come back to press, cause you have any more information? Our friendly neighborhood art dealer opened the gallery 12 years ago, and his records clean. I found some online reviews saying Ackerman is an overcharging, tasteless fraud. But hey, that's no crime. You track down Patrick Milton. Even a self-proclaimed genius like Patrick Milton can't escape the electric company, and we got his address from their bill. Here you go. So, let's go ahead and head to the hotel room now. It's a nice pad. Not what I expected, though. This girl spends thousands on artwork for the wedding, but she opts for the junior suite. People and their priorities. Okay, that was a weird transition there. Brass can track down this number for us. Wait. That artwork was definitely due the day of the murder. Okay. Wow, the European honeymoon of a lifetime. Not anymore. Got a stain here. Oh, no. Ready. A 
good idea to be thorough, but nothing's there. I think that's everything, so let's head to the artist studio. talk to you are you patrick milton man if i am las vegas crime lab murder investigation are you patrick milton yes all right yes i am patrick milton but i don't know anything about a murder you say yes sir we have a few questions you mind you better make yourself clear about how this supposedly involves me because i'm on a deadline I'm an artist on commission here, and I have a painting to finish, and I'm trying to grab a window of solitude while these damn construction workers are on break, whatever they're doing. My God, the noise lately here. Commissioner has been killed. Is that clear what? enough? W which commissioner? You don't mean Rachel? You don't mean Rachel Maddox, do you? It's not possible. There's no one on the planet more alive than Rachel. How, how did it happen? Blunt force trauma, Mr. Milton. The murder weapon may have been a statue, possibly one of yours. The first predator is missing from the gallery. My lord, no. The, the hours, the months that went into that? Was it stolen? Please tell me it wasn't destroyed. It's one of my most valuable works. Where were you yesterday? Well, right here, of course. I mean, I practically live in this studio. The demands on me as an artist are unceasing. Why didn't you show? Haven't you talked to my patron, the esteemed Nathan Ackerman? He called me and tore me a new one, and I decided the best thing to do was to stay home and get this painting and sculpture completed before Rachel's wedding day. I've been bunkered in here slaving ever since. My intention was to deliver everything tomorrow, right before the wedding. I couldn't see wasting time dealing with Rachel. There was a lot to admire about her, her spirit, her intelligence, but she was, well, she was frankly the worst-tempered woman I ever met. The most difficult client I ever encountered. I figured the less contact with her, the better. Is that the painting of Rachel behind That's you? It. And it's going well. I'm almost done with it, but I guess there isn't any hurry now. Pity. Despite her ugly side, Rachel was a beautiful woman and a worthwhile subject. And if we have a look around? Actually, yes. The Maddox Stocks Wedding Commission is only part of what I have on my plate. And I've been battling headaches and back problems, what with all this horrendous construction racket going on, starting at 7 a.m., including weekends. Do you have any idea how difficult it is to concentrate? What is your relationship with Rachel? Well, it, it began cordially enough. She was a big admirer of my work, owned a number of my bird and animal sculptures. She approached me to do these special paintings to be displayed at her wedding reception. And I told her I rarely did the human form. I'm a nature artist, you see, and I have a knack for just slightly idealizing reality. Well, she did have her charming side, you know, and she said, well, I'm one of nature's best works of art. Are you up to capturing me? <laughs> How could I turn her down? And the money wasn't bad either. And as I say, I would have delivered the painting and sculpture on time. Nick of time, but on time. Right at the reception ballroom. I'm almost done now. Did you contact Rachel or Ackerman to tell them about this change of plans? No. And before you condemn me as rude and egocentric, let me just say, you never had a deal with Rachel Maddox. You have no idea the hoops she made me jump through. Sounds unkind now that she's dead, but, but really, I wanted to keep her waiting. Let her, no other way of saying this, suffer a little, like I had. Let her squirm and stew. But my lord, I would never wish anything like this upon her. How would you describe your working relationship with her? In a word, rocky. She was a lovely girl, but rich and spoiled. At the beginning, she posed live for me. She was so demanding. I kept leaving her modeling pedestal to see what I was doing. Literally look over my shoulder. That, oh hell, that was just maddening. Finally, I just banished her from my studio. I'd already taken photographs of her in the desired pose, and these were sufficient reference. And photos don't talk back, nag, or interfere with the artistic process in any way. 
about as well, Mr. A Ackerman's phone call? Well, from my point of view, it was entirely unprofessional and even hostile. I deserve better from someone I've worked with for so long. You have no concept how much money I've made for Nathan Ackerman, but at least I didn't get caught up in a screaming match. I, I let the answering machine get it. He wanted me to drop everything and get over to the gallery. It was pretty clear from how frazzly he sounded. He had his own generous serving of Rachel Maddox at her worst. So you're telling me you didn't drop by to set Ackerman and your client straight? Hell no. Nathan I can handle. But as overworked as I am, dealing directly with Rachel Maddox, I didn't need that grief. Well, frankly, my intention was to avoid seeing her at all. She'd be at the wedding, and I'd be at the reception ballroom dropping off the art. Call me a coward, but you people never saw Rachel in full flaming bitch mode. Take the cassette tape. The square hair brushes. Stable, but I probably have a few squirrel brushes, yeah. The victim's clothing revealed a paintbrush hair. And you consider that unusual in an art gallery. You have any idea how many artists work in this town? Hundreds. And you'll find thousands of squirrel hair brushes. Good luck to you. Mind if we take a few of your brushes? Look, I'll cooperate. I know you have a job to do. But understand that I have a job to do myself. Take what you want, and then please leave me to my work to myself. Art doesn't happen. It's a struggle, and I need my solitude. And it may seem callous, but I consider finishing my artwork a higher priority than finding whoever killed Rachel Maddox. Dig into her life, and you'll find as many people not sorry to see her dead as you will squirrel hair brushes. Hey, shut the fuck up. Can you prove you were here between 5 and 6 p.m.? I live and work alone. But you already know I had no reason to leave until this artwork was finished. Haven't you been listening? I don't have anything else to say to you people. Uh, well, up there. And now let's head to the lab. Go to the chemical analyzer. I need the paint stain. This paint is not common. It's probably a mix of multiple paints, which is why the database can't find a match. All right. Go to the DNA machine here. Click on this microscope. So we got common variety squirrel paintbrush fibers. The two samples are consistent with each other, but not enough for a positive identification. Race analysis computer, no? Do audio and visual. Got a cassette of the items. Oh, we got the cassette tape. Hmm. Message received, 3.30 p.m. Patrick, are you there? I know you're there, speak up. Damn it, Patrick. This unprofessionalism has to cease. Get down here with that painting and statue ASAP. And if they're not done, you come here with Rachel Maddox. 
keep climbing the walls just to make him my ass. Take half an hour and put some finishing touches on and bring that blasted art. We need her final payment today to cover up the, uh, his wife's damage of get down here. This week she's finding new depths of unpleasantness and we have to calm her down somehow. And Patrick, if you're not here within the hour, my next call will lead to my attorney to instruct him to sue your egotistical irresponsible ass. Understood? Wow. Doesn't sound much like the host and ally we know. Sounds like Ackerman was on the edge. Go to brass. Can you track down any information from this phone number? That phone number was to a ticket theater broker. A clerk there remembers Rachel arguing with her about ticket prices. Once you've got enough evidence, I'll hit up a judge. Eight. Crime scene. Why is there blood on your shoes? Goodness, I don't know. Perhaps I stepped in it when I found her. I'm sure that must be it. I, I just don't remember that clearly. It's all a jumble. We'd like to look at the back office. Can you open it? I'm sorry, unless you have a warrant. I just can't allow you to go flinging your fingerprint powder around and spritzing your various sprays. All right. Why is there fingerprint on the Why pistol? Why would it be? I'm a hands-on gallery owner. And as it happens, I showed that very piece earlier today to a prospective buyer. Wasn't anyone else's fingerprint on there? No. Just you, Mr. Ackerman. But that doesn't prove you took your own statue. Just that you touched that pedestal. Why did you threaten Mr. Milton on the answering machine? I wouldn't call it a threat. Patrick was well aware we had a client who was high strung, and that if that artwork was late, there would be hell to pay. Well, why should I pay it? Like you're a little desperate. You know that any business suffers occasional cash flow problems, but really, uh, mentioning I might sue him was my way of lighting a fire under Patrick. He is a fussy perfectionist, and I know he could finish off that painting and even the sculpture by deadline if he just got on with it. On your yeah. case, Rachel? Why? Is that a problem? Why did you leave this out of the report? Oh, well, frankly, I forgot all about that. There were no keys on her body. Well, I uh, took them, actually. They were my property, after all, and I didn't see how they could be important. Nothing sinister about it, just an oversight, my failing to mention it. Surely you can understand I'm a bit uh, uh, flustered after all of this. Please give us those yes, keys. Of course. Rachel's blood on the keys means they were near her when she was attacked. Could the killer have used them too? I have no more questions for you. Go. Now let's go back to the lab. Go to the DNA machine again. Getting used to this now. Let's see. Let's do the swab of the victim's blood with the blood on her keys. Just to confirm. Rachel's blood is on these keys. Ackerman must have taken them from the crime scene. But was it during or after the crime? Get the trace analysis. 
fingerprints. Prince fingerprints. This key has Rachel's print on it, so it's possible she opened that locked office before she died. I wonder if our hawk statue took flight back there. Let's go to brass. Can I get a warrant? Okay. Looks like our Vic may have had access to the back office, and it's possible we may find our murder weapon back there. That's enough to get a search warrant. All right, let's go. You know, these scissors look nice and sharp, but not heavy enough to cause that spatter pattern. Hey, no, go back to the The safe is locked. Since it's too small to hold a murder weapon, our search warrant doesn't let us unlock it. We'll need a different warrant to get in here. A paper shredder. Look like he's got a fresh crop. It's possible our blunt force bird didn't fly far from the coop after all. Let's see what Robbins has to say about this. Let's see. You'll want a different tool for that. Something tells me this isn't baby powder. Let's run a narcotics test on it. Off to the lab. <sighs> Let's uh, check that powdery substance, shall we? Phenamine powder, aka speed, crank, chalk, arose by any other name. Meth interferes with the brain's neurotransmitters. It affects the brain and spinal cord. They used to use it for diet pills and nasal decongestants, but today it puts their wreck in recreational drug. Hmm. All right, let's go to the uh, DNA machine now. Whoa. Well, it looks like the 
prospective bride and groom had their prelim honeymoon on this desk. Exit. Now we need to go assemble that letter. No. I had to be close. Mr. Ackerman is holding out again. He'd been hit by a nasty lawsuit by the Vic. Maybe he pretended to mail his package, but instead waited for Mark to leave and went back into service as client, stepping in the blood when he took his keys back. Alrighty. Let's uh, go to the morgue now. Does the does this eagle statue match the wound? At first, I thought it might, but the eagle's bill is much larger than whatever caused the actual puncture wound. This is definitely not the murder weapon. All right, let's go to brass get that warrant done. Can I get a warrant. Uh, Nathan, safe. Okay. Seeking evidence of the gallery owner's financial woes, which makes a good motive for murder. I know a judge I can call to open that safe. Warrant, Mark Stack, for we questioning. We have a possible person who claims he wasn't there, but he has the Vic's blood on him. Let's talk. Let's talk, shall we? Why is the victim's blood on your clothes? I had her blood on my clothes plenty of times. Rachel had rhinoplasty a few years ago. Since then, she's had trouble with nosebleeds. She had one just before we went to the gallery. I noticed it. I changed my shirt before we left. All right. All right. After our cool down in the back room, we got into another argument. She started all romantic and sweet then surprised me with these theater tickets to the most expensive show in town. That, uh, that Canadian chick who sings real high and all. But I told Rachel... I couldn't blow off my buddies who've been planning this big bachelor party for me. She was so pissed. What do you want to see naked women for when you have me? I, I said, Rach, it's not a sex thing. It's a guy thing. I've got to spend my last night of freedom with them. <laughs> that set her off again, but I wasn't having any. I just stormed out of there. Stormed out? Well, I thought you kept your cool these days. I did keep my cool. That's how I kept it, by just walking away. What I hate is that it ended like that, that, that we parted on that nasty note. Stormed out? Well, I thought you kept your cool these days. Ride proof where you were at sure. 530? Sort of. I was on the highway, busting ass, getting to my pals waiting for me downtown. So, I can't prove it, but they'll verify when I showed up. You and Rachel have sex in the gallery? How did you know that? We found evidence of your semen inside of her. Oh. Uh-huh. Rachel had uh, a predictable habit. Whenever she got really mad, she wanted to work it off. 
the fact that Ackerman left us alone, it just made things happen faster. It was the one thing that made her temper bearable. The makeup sex. Mr. Stock, for a guy who suffered a blow like this, frankly, you seem kind of, uh, clinical about your late fiancé. I'll do my grieving my own way, pal, but I'm sure you'll find out about this anyway. I was on the verge of calling it off. The whole shooting match. Relationship, wedding, whole deal. Great sex is not enough for all this stress. Rachel was turning into an out-of-control, unreasonable nutcase of self-involved vanity. But I still loved her. Any meth? No, no, I don't do that crap. Neither did Rachel. She had a lot of vices, but not that junk. Org. The victim have a nose lean on the victim murder. Does have a blood clot in the nasal cavity and several patches of dried blood. Yes, I would say she recently had a bloody nose and no sign of trauma causing it. Bit of brass. Made any progress on finding the w murder weapon? You're in luck. One of our Hawkeye detectives found your turkey in a dumpster by the gallery. It's got a broken beak and a few other surprises. Give it a close look. Hey, Warwick. I could use an update on the art gallery homicide. Sure. First, our new CSI is all over this thing. We've already got time of death and the murder weapon. Not bad for your first night. Yeah, well, let's not break our hand patting our back. We got miles to go before we sleep. Plenty of leads, but no firm suspects. Any ideas, Kath? Sometimes the evidence we collect has more evidence on it. I suggest you give all your evidence another hard look. Murder weapon, especially. May find something key toward completing your trinity. Okay, rookie. You heard the boss. Let's go back to square one with fresh eyes. What, do I need to point it at me? What? What? Shit, I know we need to do this. Take a swab. So, the first predator had a feast for his last supper. Let's test the blood to see what type of mammal was on the menu. Well, let's take. No, I wasn't done with that. I hate when you guys do that. Take a swab. Who's to say where the substance came from, since our murder weapon was found in that damn dumpster? Collect it, though. You never know. Till you know. Okay, let's click on this DNA machine here. Look at that blood on the hawk's beak there. Victim's blood. Not the semen. Not the semen. Well, the blood on the beak is Rachel's, and the beak fits the wound, so we have our murder weapon. But who killed her?
Then let's take a look at this chemical ionizer and compare the paints. Oh, we need a listing. Let's search. Bingo. That custom paint from Patrick's brushes matches the paint on the murder weapon. So who, who do you, who do you guys think did it so far? Hmm. I don't know, but we need to go to brass to get that warrant. Get a warrant, Patrick Milton, and a studio. Evidence on Patrick. I can call a judge and get a search warrant to cover anything with paint on it. Is that wide enough of a brush for you? Sure. And then let's go to the gallery office. That's safe. Bank records. If Ackerman's got money trouble, this should tell us. Well, let's collect it. That ring? What's that? What's this? Another controlled substance? Look, I'm no longer a betting man, but if I was... Well, let's head to the artist's studio. Has Nathan ever mentioned any financial I problems to you? There's no way of avoiding this. And why I should want to protect that son of a bitch Ackerman, I'll never know. Call it misguided loyalty, but anyway, financial problems is an understatement. He owes me thousands, and over these past six months or so, he's come up with some, shall we say, unconventional ways of reimbursing me when cash wasn't handy. What was he trying to reimburse well, you? Well, he offered me his second car, a big screen television from his former rec room, any number of nice but honestly secondhand items. I took a few of these offers just to help out, but Nathan's still into me for, well, let's just say the notion of him suing me is amusing. I know he often accepts cash payments from clients, for reasons you could probably guess, detectives that you are. If not, ask the IRS. Sometimes he's had enough cash in that safe of his to paper those gallery walls. What safe are you talking about? Oh, it's in his back office slash stock room. Keeps documents, sales records, and so on in there, I believe. Well, with cash in that safe, maybe you broke in to claim it was yours. And Rachel Maddox just happened to be there after hours. The very person you wanted to avoid. Ridiculous! That's slander! So sue me. I want to search your studio. There's nothing here that has anything to do with your stupid investigation. You're violating my sanctuary. Well, you're violating this warrant. Move. Great, nice place. Broke. So this is the famous painting in progress. Yeah, we're going to have to take this. There. Blue paint. But is it the blue paint? Who knows? All right, let's uh, click on that file cabinet over there. Check this out. Like that. A suspicious bag of powder. Now this paints a whole new picture, doesn't it? Now here's the statue our artist friend was finishing up the night before the wedding. The Vic had an ego, all right. I don't see any paint on her, though. A good idea to be thorough, but nothing's there. Uh.
Killer tickets for the hottest show in town, Night of the Murder. Boy, you're lucky when you land these. Ooh, 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 fingerprint. No. Someday our prince will come, and this is it. Let's get this over to the lab. But first, let's go to a morgue. A lot of back and forth, I know. Does a hawk statue match the head wound? This is a match. This was the item used to bludgeon Rachel to death. The puncture wound is consistent with a hawk statue's beak. Plus, the fragment I recovered from the head wound matches the beak. Now let's head to the lab. Let's do the chemical analyzer first. The, we need the paint. Paint from the painting. Paint from the art studio matches the murder weapon. Maybe Patrick tried to deliver that painting after all. He grabbed his own artwork and swung it hard. Alright, let's uh, do the uh, bag next. That's items. matches the same batch of meth from Ackerman so it appears they have a distinct relationship and it's not legal it race no prints tickets Patrick Milton, having them in his possession ties him directly to her. Okay, searching links. Need Nathan Ackerman's bank statement. That's documents. Our gallery guys busted flatter than a stretch canvas. Now let's go to brass. Oh no. Question the suspect again. The warrant. Not there.
I can't think of anything pertinent that I haven't already shared. Can we go back to the lab? Maybe I missed something. Samples of the same stash as the other stuff we found. Maybe art isn't all that Mr. Ackerman's dealing. There we go. How's that helps. Going? Close, Cap. Real close. Rookie's done good so far. We just found more meth at the gallery. That doesn't fit what Doc Robin says about the Vic's tox screen. Negative on meth in her system. So it wasn't meth infused rage, no matter what you found. Good to know. Okay, Rook. Let's see how somebody just saying yes to drugs figures in. All right, now let's go get that warrant. That question him. He's on his way to interrogation now. What can you tell us about your financials? The Nathan Ackerman Fine Arts Studio has thrived over the past 12 years I've been in business, and we've never been more vital. I'm even expanding my staff. The suggestion that we are anything other than financially sound is an insult. Well, let me add some injury to that insult. This shredded document says Rachel Maddox was suing you for a breach of contract. Uh, perhaps I should have mentioned that. But really, such minor disagreements are common in a business of this nature. Here it is. We found powdered methamphetamine in your office. I, all I can think of is that many of my clients are wealthy, and I'm dealing with artists constantly, and those are two classes of people who are known to use recreational drugs. Someone apparently used them in my back office without my knowledge. Even though you keep it locked? Well, well, victim had in your case, office? It's a violation of my trust. I'd be lying if I said that those two weren't capable of such tasteless shenanigans, but it obviously didn't take place in my presence. No, just in your gallery, in your back office. Is there anything else you neglected to mention? Insults upon insult. I cooperate fully, and this is what I get. Find a couple having sex in my... In your office if it's always locked. But it might be possible that Rachel and Mark brought that meth into my space. After all, if they were capable of semi-public fornication, uh, what weren't they capable of? Good point. Only we found drugs in your safe. M maybe they found some way to get past the lock uh, and planted those drugs in there to cause me difficulties. Rachel was suing me after all. I'm afraid not. Toxicology on Rachel came up negative for meth. Perhaps you killed her to cover your sinking business. No, no, I'm getting back on my feet. It's a phase in the life of a successful business. Yes, I stared bankruptcy in its foul face, but not because of any malfeasance or incompetence on my part. It's the unreliable lights of these artists. And Patrick Milton is the poster child of these irresponsible flakes. And since I am indeed filing Chapter 11, the threat of a lawsuit means nothing. Maybe so, but that stash of meth means something. Like you're dealing, maybe? I keep hearing you want to cooperate, Mr. Ackerman. That works better without lies. I do not deal in drugs. That was a misguided effort on my part to buy a commodity that I could turn around and give to Patrick Milton in exchange for some of what I owed him and make a sort of profit doing it. I had to keep him happy. 
because the money Rachel Maddox would pay for the wedding artwork would have gone a long way toward getting me out of this financial hole. Is that forthright enough for you? But you didn't get art from Patrick, or money from Rachel. So you struck back at the both of them and grabbed that statue, killing two stones with one bird. I killed no one. I mailed a package. If you did, it wasn't at your regular shipping service, because nobody there remembers seeing you. We've even checked their surveillance tapes, and you aren't starring in them. You don't even make a cameo appearance. Where were you at the time of the murder? I do have mm. an alibi. I really do. But it's rather embarrassing. You see, I was with my dreadful term, Bookie. Here I am, a longtime Vegas resident, and I make the same mistake as the stupid jurist. I try to get ahead by betting. And what money I did have, I lost. As you probably already know, I am financially ruined, finished. But I've said I'd cooperate, and I will. Here's the number to call to confirm. I can't think of anything pertinent that I haven't already shared. Okay, time to go to brass. Victim. Yeah. Ackerman's alibi checks. He was with his bookie, all right. But we got him on ice for holding and possibly dealing. Question of suspect again. Patrick. Can I get a warrant? Patrick Milton. We could serve about 12 warrants on this bozo. He's coming down to the station now. And if he can talk his way out of this, he's a real artist. It was you. We know you killed Rachel. You know no such thing. She was a client, and a rich one. She was a pain in the ass, sure, but I wouldn't kill the goose providing the golden eggs. Do I look that stupid? The evidence says you do. So I think you went down there to deliver the unfinished painting. Maybe you tried to pass it off as an artistic statement, but Rachel was having none of it. You see, the meth increased your normal rage, so you grabbed the nearest heavy object, ironically signing the murder with your own work. But the painting is oil-based, and it transferred blue paint to the hawk. So you ditched the hawk in a dumpster, but you kept the damaged painting. So it could support your story that you were still working while Rachel was being killed. And as for the wallet, you grabbed the cash and you dumped it. The tickets, I'm sure, were hidden in the cash. And when you noticed them, you tore them up. But you had no idea Rachel's fingerprints remained. Do you have any idea, any notion at all, what it's like to be an artist, a true artist, and have to put up with the capitalistic needs of that pompous ass Ackerman reading me the riot act over the phone, that fool? He was the one who made me mad, really. Truly got my negative energies flowing. But when I came around to deliver that damn painting, who was waiting? All by yourself. The lovely subject of my painting. And the painting, you've seen it yourself, it's a masterpiece. It can still use some finishing touches. Only you gave the model, not the painting, the finishing touches, didn't you, Patrick? The woman was a 14 karat bitch. She had the nerve to attack my painting, to criticize me. Face too bright, hair too dark, dress draped improperly, proportions all wrong. God, if I only had the courage to depict the inner her, the demon behind that beautiful face. She's lucky I didn't. She's lucky. Well, she's also dead. She was your boss, Patrick. Night before her wedding, she had to chase you around for the artwork she commissioned. Ever think maybe she had a point? Easy for you. Easy for you. You weren't there. You weren't the brunt of her verbal blows. Yeah, but she was the brunt of your literal blows. Fine. I did it. I rid the world of a monster, a shrill, unrelenting witch. I did her the favor of making her beauty live forever through my art, and the world a favor by ridding it of her inner ugliness. Satisfied? And now I'm tired. I need rest, I need peace, some quiet. Time to contemplate and time alone to create my art. Thank you. Well, you'll have plenty of time alone from here on out. That was a fine first lesson in the art of crime scene investigation. Without the evidence you and Warwick uncovered, that was a masterpiece of murder that might have gone unsolved. Good job. 
Before we get back out into the field, let me review your case and give you your evaluation. You investigated every possible angle on this case. Doesn't happen often, but I'm very impressed. Well, thank you. So, that is all for this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, feel free to hit that like and subscribe button. Also, leave a comment down below on what other video games you want us to play. And don't forget to hit that notification bell as well. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.